I have complained a lot about how EU fans don't get the best treatment by Disney and Lucasfilm. However, there has been a lot of good news and announcements, specifically for EU fans, and I have to give credit where it's due. In my last video, I mentioned how we're getting more EU action figures, EU Funko Pops, Republic Commando re-released on the PS4 and Nintendo Switch, EU shows finally added to the Disney Plus catalog, and a new update to the Old Republic MMO. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll put a link in the description, so go check it out. But we actually have even more news, as well as stuff that I either missed in my last video or need to clarify on. First off, I neglected to mention that the Legends Epic Collection, The New Republic Volume 5, is now available for purchase off Amazon as of March 23rd. What this comic collection comprises of is the Dark Empire Trilogy, better known as those comics where Palpatine returned in a clone body. And with Rise of Skywalker in the new canon, I'd say this comic series is more relevant now than ever before. Because now you once again, in physical format, have a direct parallel story to what Disney attempted to do in their latest movie. And some would say Dark Empire did it better. So if you were disappointed by Rise of Skywalker, you have here an at least more in-depth version of the Clone Palpatine storyline. If you loved Rise of Skywalker, you can now read where J.J. Abrams and crew perhaps got the seeds of the idea for Episode 9. There is a hardcover collection of the Dark Empire trilogy from 2010, but it goes for ridiculous prices online. So if I were you, I'd stick with the Epic Collection. Not only is it much cheaper, but you also get extra content from the Star Wars Handbook and Star Wars Tales. If you're interested, there will be a link in the description. Speaking of collections, the Republic Commando video game is available for digital download on the PS4 and Switch on April 6th, but Limited Run Games is going to make a physical Republic Commando Collector's Edition for both PS4 and Switch available for pre-order on April 16th. It includes an individual numbered certificate of authenticity, full color interior art and a manual, a commemorative metal coin, a thermal detonator enamel pen, a set of premium art cards, a reversible 18x24 inch poster, and official steelbook case. I was happy enough just getting the game itself re-released, but this collector's edition is absolutely gorgeous, and if you're a fan of this game, I imagine this would probably be of great interest to you as well. Previously I got the beautiful collector's edition of Dark Forces from Limited Run Games, and to be honest, I'm really tempted to get the Republic Commando one too. Like I mentioned before, it will go up for pre-order on April 16th, and just like the company is titled, it will only be for a limited time. So try to be one of the first to snatch it up, if you can. I previously talked about how for the first time, EU content is finally coming to Disney Plus with the 2003 Clone Wars micro series, both the Ewok movies, the Ewok show, and the story of the fateful Wookiee. And it's all out now on Disney Plus for a whole brand new potential audience to experience the EU. And for some, it'll probably be for the very first time. Though they're not putting the movies and shows under the Legends banner. Rather, they are part of the vintage Star Wars collection. Which, yeah, is technically true. These are older shows. Calling them vintage does make sense. Hopefully they eventually add the droids cartoon to the collection as well. However, I don't believe there is anything saying these shows all take place in a different continuity. So since they're not using the Legends banner, I think you could run the risk of casual fans thinking these older shows take place in the same universe as the sequel trilogy or the Mandalorian or whatever. Maybe that's not a huge concern for Disney in the long run? I mean, oh well, I guess it's their problem. I'm just happy they're on Disney+. Plus. I don't know why it took so long, but all that matters is that they are here. Though sadly, if all the EU shows are separated in a different category called Vintage, it doesn't give me a lot of hope that we might potentially see brand new Legends content on Disney+. Plus. After all, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to release a new Legend show and then slap it with the Vintage label, but I would be happy to be proven wrong. Having these shows available is awesome news if you have Disney+. Plus. Though what would actually make me subscribe is the announcement of a brand new Legend show, and I would be happy to do so. On Twitter, Delray dropped a bombshell on us this last Friday. To celebrate Lucasfilm's 50th anniversary like Hasbro did with the EU action figures, Delray is curating a collection of essential Star Wars Legends novels in trade paperback with new covers, and the Shatterpoint novel will also receive a fully unabridged audio edition for the first time. All this is available June 15th. They plan to add more Classic Legends books to this collection in the future, with the next group coming in this fall. And they also show a picture to show what the trade paperback means, comparing the size difference between the new trade Heir to the Empire and its current mass market paperback. 
and in the replies they also strongly imply that the rest of the Thrawn trilogy and Darth Bane trilogy are also going to come out in these formats. I just have to say, yes, 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 this is 100% what I've been asking for. In my Things I Want to See from Lucasfilm video, I asked for books to come out with new covers and artwork. And I asked for previously released audiobooks to get unabridged versions if they didn't have them already. This is super awesome news for the fans, and I don't know if anyone has pointed this out yet, but this tweet absolutely blew up. And if you scroll through the Star Wars Books Twitter feed, it has more comments, more retweets, and more likes on this post than anything else Del Rey has tweeted in a long time, including, but not limited to, tweets announcing the new canon Thrawn books, the Mandalorian novel, or High Republic books. Let me repeat that. Re-releases of books from the non-canon universe, which are all over 15 years old at this point, got more engagement on Twitter than brand new Star Wars books. That is crazy, but it doesn't surprise me. If you give something to fans that they want, we will support it. Once again, my full props to Disney and Lucasfilm. This is awesome. I will get these books. I will somehow make room on my bookshelf for them. They look beautiful and the artists did a great job. But on top of that, EU books with new covers, we've gotten that a little bit over the years since the decanonization. But to go back and make a new unabridged audiobook for a Legends novel? I think the last time they did that was in 2011 with the 20th anniversary of Heir to the Empire, back when the EU was still canon. But now they're doing it with Shatterpoint. Personally, I'm not an audiobook person, but I think I'll make this my first one especially if it helps support a trend of going back and releasing the complete version of those old audiobooks. Shatterpoint is an excellent novel written by one of my favorite authors, Matthew Stover. And speaking of Matthew Stover, he recently did an interview with the Beyond the Blast Doors YouTube channel, and it really is a very well done interview. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. Though there was this one interesting thing that Mr. Stover said about canon. Take a listen. Okay, yeah. And then you you brought that into Revenge of the Sith. We there is a, 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 a little bit. Well, yeah. you know, um, uh, I I had a long talk with with Mr. Lucas out at Skywalker Ranch about mm -hmm. Revenge of the Sith, and I asked him uh, a lot of questions. We 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 spent a lot of time talking about Jedi and and you know how he wanted the the book to feel and stuff like that. And, you know, in, in those days, there was none of this um, kind of canon wars sure. stuff that came about later on. Right. Uh, it was all canon. Everything published was canon. And so I thought, well, you know, the reason they hired me mm -hmm. to write Revenge of the Sith was because of Shatterpoint. If you are someone who has ever talked about the expanded universe online, Inevitably, some random person comes in and is like, the EU was never canon. Even though multiple people who have worked at Lucasfilm or with Lucasfilm in the past have reiterated many times, yes, the expanding universe was officially canon. And believe it or not, I take their word for it more than I do some random internet troll. I know this really isn't related to news regarding Legends content, but it's just nice to hear Mr. Silver confirm what EU fans already know to be true. If you ever hear someone say that EU was never canon, show them this clip so they can hear the truth directly from Matthew Stover's mouth. Moving on, I made a couple of videos talking about the Star Wars Insider Fiction Collection. Links in the description if you want to check it out. Anyway, Volume 1 was supposed to come out last month, but it looks like it got pushed back a little, so now it looks like it's coming out on May 4th. Get it? May the 4th be with you, hardy her. Star Wars Day, but the weird thing is the description on Penguin Random House's webpage got changed a little. Here's what it looked like before, and here's what it looks like now. If you'll recall, there was a little confusion, because before it was kind of hinted that this was going to be a collection of legend short stories from the Insider magazine. The book has a Legends banner, the characters listed in the description, Plagueis, Onaka, Rex, and Revan, all have Insider stories in the Legends continuity. The description now lists the characters Plagueis, Onaka, and Temen Snap Wexley. Who is Temen Wexley? Why, he's a character who is only from the new canon. If I saw his name in the original description, I would know that Volume 1 contains both EU and new canon stories, which I didn't know originally when I pre-ordered the book a few months ago. So my question is, 
did someone who works for Random House happen to notice the fan backlash and realize that their original description is a tad misleading and that's why they changed it? I have no idea. Better late than never, I suppose. Though I still wish these collections didn't mix legends and canon stories together in the same book. I am still going to get volume 1, and I will do a review on it when it comes out. And finally, I just wanted to give a shout out to Sergeant Creel on DeviantArt. He's someone who has lately been making so much Expanded Universe related fan art. I enjoy highlighting his work on my Facebook page like I do with a lot of other great EU artwork. But I specifically like his artwork because it's always just such high quality and consistently good. I'll put a link to his DeviantArt in the description. I highly recommend you check out his page and give him a follow. It really is great stuff. So I don't know about all of you, but I feel pretty good about the direction Star Wars has been heading lately. Both the fans and Lucasfilm seem to be showing a lot of love towards Legends Universe. And if this trend continues, maybe we'll even start to see new Legends stories since the EU is back in the spotlight. Keep it coming, Lucasfilm. If you got the products, I am ready and willing to give you more of my money.